everyone and welcome to the witch's cauldron my name is paula um today's lesson for wicca 101 is on the elements um now most people um you know realize that uh witches and wiccans work with um you know the god and the goddess um but they may not realize that we equally work with the elements and a lot of things that we do are based on particular correspondences that are associated with each element um, there are various things that are associated with each element the five elements are earth air fire water and spirit and each one of those elements represents a point on the pentagram um, most people don't realize that either. They think that the pentagram is a um, uh, satanic symbol only. It's not uh, to Wiccans. It is representative of the five elements. So um, the first thing I really want to discuss is as I'm going through all of these, take a look at yourself and see which characteristics and traits of the elements are you most drawn to? Can you look at your own life and see characteristics of yourself in these elemental kind of correspondences and qualities? Okay, um, the very first one that I want to um, speak about is air. Let's start off there. Um, each of the elements is um, corresponding to a cardinal direction. In other words, north, south, east, and west. Air is affiliated with the east, okay? The color that represents it is typically yellow, but it can also be represented by like sky blue and, you know, pastel, very light and airy colors. But the primary one, when we're working our magical correspondences that you typically think about with air is yellow um, and when you're when we work with air um, what we're want, trying to do air is all about intellect and mental power and thought so this is you know the element that we work with to improve communication um, to expand our awareness around us learning enhancing intellectual abilities looking uh, to air for inspiration and creative processes, um, teaching, um, improving your memory, things like that. Um, typical kind of things that you can think of in your mind that would be associated with air is laughter. And, you know, you think about that, you know, you laugh so hard, you lose your breath, you can't catch your breath. So think about that. Um, now, there are various stones, powers, things like that. Um, air is a masculine element and it is projective. In other words, it projects out. If it's re receptive, it means it comes into you, okay? So it's actually a masculine um, element and it's projective. You know, things you wanna project out. Um, like being able to communicate, teach, etc., etc. I am embracing the air side of me right now in teaching you about the elements. Okay, think of it that way. Um, now, one of the things that I absolutely love is that you can find associations that aren't strictly, you know, pagan in nature to the elements. Okay. And the first one that I think of are the archangels. And the archangel that is affiliated with air is Raphael. So he, Raphael, if you remember, was one of God's messengers. So think of it that way. Um, and there are things that are called elemental beings, okay? And the elemental beings that are associated with air are sylphs, S-Y-L-P-H-S. And sylphs, think of like, um, oh, like a, a fairy. 
you know, with the diaphanous wings, that kind of thing. Sylphs are very, very, you know, similar to that. Um, the magical power of it. When you think about air in your mind, the mantra should be to know because it's all about, you know, communication, knowing something about someone else, developing your awareness, developing your knowledge, things like that. So um, the animals associated with air are butterflies, bats, dragonflies, eagles, hawks, hummingbirds, owls. In other words, most um, birds and flying insects. So the plants that are typically associated with air are aspen, alder, birch, um, anise, lavender, lemongrass, mistletoe, um, cedar elm, acacia, and mimosa. Okay, the stones typically associated with air are things like aventurine, opal, tiger's eye, mica, topaz, white fluorite, and turquoise. These are some of my favorite ones. Um, for those of you who um, are into divination and using tarot and things like that, the um, suit of the tarot deck, the minor arcana um, that is affiliated with air is the suit of swords. So think about, you know, if you know anything about tarot, some of the things that are affiliated with a lot of the cards in that um, suit involve things that are very kind of, um, you know, can be kind of airy in nature, okay? Um, let's see, uh, the zodiac signs that are affiliated with air are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Um, the planets are Neptune and Jupiter. The time of day is the dawn. Uh, the day of the week is Wednesday. Air is typically affiliated with uh, springtime. Um, and there are magical tools that are that are affiliated with it. And uh, let's see, incense, um, feathers, your broom, that kind of thing. Um, it's affiliated with the heart chakra. Um, and now, positive characteristics in in the element of air is being joyful, humor, uh, communicative, um, intelligent, intuition, and being diligent. Now, you can kind of, the narrative, the flip of that, the negative side of it, is that, you know, gossiping, being boastful, being um, spend, a spendthrift, uh, being untruthful or telling lies, um, being selfish, um, fickle and being inattentive. So if you have an overbalance of air in your life, you can be a real chatterbox, you can be kind of shallow, or you can over intellectualize things. Um, you, you know, that would be someone who has to like prove that they're smarter than everybody else in the room. Um, if there's an underbalance, you could have kind of um, muddled thinking or, you know, find a, um, like I am right now, stuttering over your own words and having a hard time to communicate your wants and needs, okay? Um, the next one that I want to talk about is um, water. So the direction uh, affiliated with water is the west. And the typical color of it is blue. So that would be, you know, like blue and indigo color, um, aqua, um, like the greens that are on the blue green scale of things, silver and um, also purple can be affiliated with it. Um, the mantra for water is to dare, okay? Um, 
this is the typical you know associations with water that you that you really think about is healing making peace with someone making new friends purification putting things at peace um, it's about emotions and dreams and compassion and love and psychic ability and divination and increasing your your intuition and astral travel and things like that okay um this is a feminine element and it is receptive okay um the archangel affiliated with water is gabriel so remember that gabriel is the healer archangel okay so the elemental being are undines or undines depending on how you pronounce you want to pronounce it and it's also o-n-d-i-n-e-s as well as u-n-d-i-n-e-s depend on where in the world and your tradition and everything like that and an undine is um like a mermaid think of a mermaid um so animals that are the affiliated with water are like dolphins the otter fish basically all your aquatic creatures even jellyfish um the plants are alders hazel willow aloe lemon yarrow um, american elm mesquite violets and wax myrtle now the stones that are typically uh, affiliated with it include agates moss agate calcite diamonds emerald um oh excuse me that was the wrong one all right the crystals and stones that belong to water are amethyst aquamarine azurite celestite chrysocolla which is one of my favorite favorite stones around because it is so good for helping you deal with um, really deep emotional trauma that's been there for a long time so i find this one's really good for people like that have ptsd um, so when I'm, I'm having a PTSD flare up, I, I make sure I have chrysocolla with me everywhere. Um, coral, mother of pearl, lapis lazuli, lepidio, lepidolite, moonstones, which is another one of my favorite ones, pearls, um, blue and pink tourmalines, sapphires, selenite, and sodalite. Uh, let me see also limestone is affiliated with it and rose quartz and shells um, so you know like the mother of pearl um, the metals that are affiliated with it are like copper and silver um, let's see the tarot suit is the suit of cups so if you think about you know the suit of cups and the cards that are that comprise the suit of cups it has a lot to do with like emotions and relationships and love and things like that okay um the zodiac signs affiliated with it are cancer scorpio and pisces the planets um is the moon and some people consider venus uh, affiliated with it the hour of the day is dusk um, the day of the week that is typically affiliated with it is Mondays some people also include Fridays in there the season um, is fall um, let's see the magical tools would be um, like the chalice the cup the bowl the cauldron uh, think of you know like the womb of uh the goddess okay that's affiliated with the water um the best types of magic are divination dream work psychic powers astral tra travel um healing and also addressing things to do with fertility that's a, that's another good one as well as um earth now the positive characteristics um are compa being compassionate loving forgiving sensitive easygoing you're modest um the ne negative characteristics can be being overly sensitive um weepy and dramatic 
um, being, you know, like the clinging vine and very dependent on other people or being indifferent, lazy, insecure, um, and frigid. And if there's an overbalance of water in the life, sometimes that leads to depression and being hypersensitive. An underbalance can mean that someone's a little cold, they're, they're emotionless in nature, okay? Now the next one that I want to speak about is mine. I am a fire girl through and through and through, primarily fire and earth. Um, fire is affiliated with the South, um, and the color that is typically associated with it, think about your hot and warm colors. Usually it's represented by red, uh, it's represented by a red candle on my altar, um, orange, golds, and yellows. Think about, you know, like this time of year, the, the fall, really vibrant, or even the summer sunflower kind of colors, you know, that kind of gold. Um, it is a masculine element and it's projective. So when you think about fire, think about action. You know, fire, you, you know, they used to say where I come from, light a fire under your butt to get moving, to get you to do something. Um, so it's all about action and will. And it's also about passion and sex and lust, but it's also anger. It can be desire. It's, um, energy it's all about work um, fire is a good purification um, but fire destroys so it can be about destruction um, and then giving you strength and it's also good for protection so the qualities of it are it's hot it's dry it's light it's an, it's an active element um, and the mantra for it would be to will in other words the willpower, you know, for you to get up and get going and tackle something. Now, the elemental being that is associated is salamanders, like the little lizard things. Um, the animals are lions, tigers, and uh, salamanders. So, um, oh, the archangel is the archangel Michael. So you think everybody, you know, archangel is Michael is the protector, you know, defend us in battle. Um, so think of it that way. Um, plants would be thorn, holly, oak, basil, cinnamon, garlic, um, junipers, sunflowers, things of that nature. The stones typically affiliated with it are, um, excuse me, I lost my place, amber, bloodstone, um, carnelian, citrines, diamonds, garnets, rubies, um, fire agates, fire opals, flint, sardonyx, apache tears, uh, red tourmaline, sunstones, spinels, and also sulfur. Um, now the metal is a brass, gold, and steel. That's why I love my gold. Um, some of the mythological beings that associated are the dragon and the phoenix, just, you know, for grins and giggles. Um, now the tarot suit is wands. And you think about the suit of wands in tarot, it's usually about, you know, action and conflict and you know protecting yourself from certain things happening um but also the um sun card is affiliated with it um the strength card and the emperor is affiliated with it um so the zodiac signs are aries leo and sagittarius and for those of you in the tarot, know that, um, you know, the sun card is Leo's, like, sig significator card um, in the tarot deck. So the hour of the day is noon. The days of the week are Sunday and Tuesday. The season is summer. Think about the hot summer days. Um, let's see. Magical tools. Think of 
um, you know, like athames, swords, wands, flame, candle, that kind of thing. Um, the chakra is the solar, solar plexus. The best types of ma magic for fire elements is banishing, exorcisms, purification, um, sex magic, empowering, protection, and then success spells, spells like, you know, getting you up and getting you going to, to be successful in something. Now, the positive characteristics of the element of fire is that it's energetic, it's enthusiastic, courageous, daring, but you're also very faithful and very loyal, okay? Now, some of the negative characteristics, and I, and I believe me, I know, stubborn, um, greedy, jealousy, being angry, and resentful. So if you have an overbalance of fire, somebody can be downright dominating and egotistical and bordering on violent. Um, and if there's an underbalance, they can be really apathetic, you know, feelings of inferiority, um, lack of energy, being really lazy, that kind of stuff. Um, so the next one that I want to talk about is Earth. Um, and Earth, the direction affiliated with it is North. And the associations with it are um, grounding energy to center and stabilize your energy and be a stabilizing um, force in your life, protecting your energy field. Um, anything that has to do with like your home and hearth, like, you know, a roof over your head, money to pay for things, food, um, crops, wealth, um, prosperity. It's all about your home, but it's also, you think about, when you think about earth and you think about a rock, you know, that rock is strong, right? So, um, it's also... Um, about nature, um, about growth cycles, that kind of stuff. So this is a feminine um, element and it is receptive. And its mantra is to be silent. And the colors typically affiliated with it are green, brown, and black. Think about those, you know, earthy tones that you see, okay? The Archangel is Oriel. Okay, uh, the elemental being are gnomes, and I'm not talking about gnomes like those cute little things you see out in the garden. No, 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 no. Elemental gnomes are, you know, typically rather grumpy. Um, so, um, if you ever run up on one, you'll know it. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, cause when they're not happy, they, they make things happen, um, in a big way. So, um, the, let's see, animals affiliated with it are bears, coyotes, deer, wolves, um, most four-legged animals, um, and animals that go by the night. Okay. So like your nocturnal ones. Okay. Plants are ash. Uh, dwarf elms, hawthorns, patchouli, vetiver, um, let's see, Texas persimmons uh, in Indian grass. Now, the stones are amazonite, emeralds, hematite, jade, jet, lodestone, uh, malachite, peridot, turquoise, serpentine, um, onyx, black tourmaline, one of my favorite, onyx is too, um, agates, moss agate, uh, calcite, um, and diamonds are also in there, and jaspers are in there. So the metals are lead and mercury. Um, the tarot suit is Pentacles, and that's, you know, pentacles, some call it coins, some call it discs, depending on the depth, the um, deck. And you think about the, the suit of pentacles. It's all about 
you know, your work, your home, how much you have, abundance or lack of, everything like that, you know? Just think about the two of coins, you know? It's, it's juggling, you know, to make things, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. Um, so the devil card, the empress, the emperor, and the world are from the major arcana that are also affiliated with Earth. The zodiac signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And I will tell you, with my better half being a Taurus and me being a Leo, it is a wonder that we get along at all because two hard-headed people. Now, the planets are Jupiter and Saturn. The hour is midnight. The days of the week are Thursdays and Saturdays. The season is winter. So, you know, old age. I, I am in my earth part of my life right now. You know, I'm in my crone phase. Um, now, the magical tool is the pentacle, a rock, um, a hammer if it's used, salt, a drum, a shield, things like that. It's affiliated with your root chakra. So the types of magic that are the most effective, really tapping into elemental earth, is things to do with your household. Um, you know, uh, prosperity, working with your ancestors, fertility, grounding, protection, especially protection of your home, okay? And then what, you know, some people call eco magic. Like I do a lot of um, spells to heal the earth because, you know, we as humans do not treat mother earth well at all. Um, now the positive characteristics are being reliable, punctual, stable, um, wise, um, preserving memories, things of that nature. Now, the negative characteristics can be being greedy, um, being, how can I say it, a sensualist, in other words, um, sensual about material things almost, materialistic, stodgy, and being narrow-minded. So an overbalance of earth could make somebody very boring. They could have tunnel vision and be very, very materialistic. And an underbalance would be somebody who's kind of careless um, and unreliable and who's kind of crass and tasteless. Um, so the last one to talk about is actually one of the, it's kind of the most important one because it's called spirit. It's the ether. It is everything that binds everything together. It's the fifth element. It keeps all the other elements together. It contains the past, the present, and future. Um, it's, it's the Akasha, okay? If you've ever done any studying of Edgar Cayce, C-A-Y-C-E, he's a very famous American um, psychic. Um, and he would talk about the Akashic records, you know, traveling to the Akashic records to, you know, find out knowledge and things. So the typical associations, the direction is just center. You know, it's in the center of everything. It holds everything together. So it's about unification, magic in general, change, transformation, alchemy, and it's about your connection to the divine. So, you know, performing rituals and sacraments. Um, you can look to spirit to help you unlike, uh, unlock your past life memories or to do a past life regression, uh, to improve your meditation abilities, um, increasing your spiritual connection, okay? So there is, the colors typically associated with it are white, black, and purple. Um, there is no gender or receptive or, um, you know, qualities to it or anything like that, projective qualities. Um, the archangel that is affiliated with spirit is Metatron. And um, the animals sometimes affiliated with it are snakes and spiders. 
Um, the plants are apples, um, vervain, and artemisia. The stones, apophyllite, dandrite, fossils, clear quartz, and amethyst. Um, the metals, meteorites. Um, the tarot suit is the major arcana, particularly the magician, the high priestess, the hierophant, the hermit, the wheel of fortune, temperance, the star, and judgment. Um, there are no zodiac signs or planets or days or anything like that. The life cycle is before, death, before birth and after death, so when you are in the afterlife. Um, the symbols uh, typically aff affiliated with it are a spiral or the Star of David. Um, now, the magical tools that are sometimes uh, affiliated with it are, the co are your cord. Um, when most Wiccans go through training with their tradition, when they reach a certain, um, in my tradition, when you became you got to the point where you were at the priestess level in other words you were not just you know um an initiate into the order you were a pretty adept practitioner of magic and you had kind of graduated to be able to go to the priestess level at after that third level that we did um we got a cord from our high priestess and that becomes part of you know what you wear um, when you do rituals and then when I went through the advanced priestess priestess and advanced priestess or high priestess as some orders call it um, I also got different cords for that so that's the kind of thing um, now there's no real positive or you know overbalance but if there is an underbalance you can be kind of feeling kind of life, lifeless and shallow, you know, where you feel kind of empty inside. So most, um, part of your altar, uh, my daily altar, the, the setup not only includes, you know, representations of the god and the goddess, but it also represent, it has representations of each element on it. Um, for earth, I have a, um, jar of sea salt, of salt. Um, for air, I have a bell and some feathers. For fire, I have a red candle. For water, um, I typically either have like a small bowl of water or I have a seashell that has other seashells inside of it. Um, so, you know, those kinds of things. In addition to having like an altar candle, but I've also got, you know, a cauldron. I've got, you know, other things on my altar. So, you know, I really want you to, to stop and think and do some research about things that are affiliated with each element that you would like, that you're drawn to, you know, whether it's stones or you know a rune or a tarot card or you know whatever physical representation that it is you know an herb whatever of an element what would you incorporate on your altar tell me down in the comment section what you would be drawn to and what tell me in the comment section what element are you do you feel like in your personality that you have the strongest affiliation with. Like I've said, mine without a doubt are, you know, earth and fire. And it has taken me a lot of years to really, you know, bring up m my level of affiliation with air and water to be a comparable level by taking on things like teaching people and um, embracing my psychic ability and being a medium and I have a paranormal channel. Um, so, you know, I have really tried in the last 15 years since, you know, deciding to um, 
study Wicca and become a witch, um, to really try and come from having this really heavy balance of earth and fire, um, and you know, kind of being a little bit behind on water and air to try and you know balance them out and have a more balanced um, affinity with each one of the elements. In other words, I'm equally comfortable working with any of the elements now. And I really have um, embraced and uh, worked on spirit. In other words, working on my connection with the divine, working on my connection with my fellow man, um, things of that nature. So with that, everybody, um, let me know down there in the comment section what, you know, elements you are affiliated with fairly easily and what element do you think you need to really work on the most? Let me know. And again, let me know what your altar, what you would put on your altar to represent each one of the elements. So with that, guys, that's it for this video on the Wicca 101. Um, the homework and uh, the reading and everything, the syllabus, I'll link that down again, um, will be in the description box. Um, and I thank you so much for tuning in. And until we see each other again, Mary we did meet, Mary we will part. Until we Mary meet again, be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.